All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harak HaKwadash. A double honors unto the elders and apostles of GMS Great Millstone. And a sincere Shalom to all Yaakim bringing out this word in diligence and in truth. You know, um, now this lesson, Lord willing, I'll be going to, you know, uh, one of the parallels of, um, you know, the Great Fire of Rome, <clears throat> in which they call it, which you know is the besiegement of Rome. You know, uh, 64 AD, <clears throat> which was um, ruled by uh, Nero, <clears throat> or yeah, ruled by Nero. And um, the the aspect I want to touch on is persecution. You know, that's that's the, the heaviest part of this. All right, so I got this article. It says in a hot July summer of 64 AD, a fire broke out near Capena Gate, um, the marketplace near the Circus Maximus, and spread quickly across the entire uh, circus. And finally, it was completely out of control. The fire destroyed nearly half of Rome. <clears throat> it says, um, now it says the Roman historian Tac Tacitus records this event. Now we understand that this is also part of a biblical history, right? Because we understand that a before, um, you know, 64 to 70 AD occurred in Rome. A Yahweh Shai was on the scene. He had warned Jake to flee into the mountains, right? And he did that because it was a prophecy that a this would happen, you know, that Jake would be slaughtered. Hey, when this um time period happened, and that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what occurred. So I want to grab a couple precepts. First, this is coming from the book of Luke twenty one, and I'll start here at um twenty. It says, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking, right? Then let them know, uh then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. <clears throat> now it says, but woe unto them that are with child. And it's beautiful because a, as Yahweh Shai was speaking, this not only um, applies to you know, the, the time of Rome, but this also applies now. So it's a manifold prophecy. prophecy. It says, um, but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And how do we know this also, This is also going to apply? Well, when we go into the book of Daniel, right? And we go into um, 12th chapter in the first verse. And it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And those that be delivered, saved, and helped. Or of the elect, you know, it's speaking of the elect, not two thirds. But the scripture still tells us <clears throat> that it's going to be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. They saw the, the plagues that we read in the scriptures, you know, famine, pestilence, great evil, apparitions, newly created creatures, you know, sedition among men, civil war. You know, all of these uh, occurrences of, of judgments, of scourges are going to happen in the times that we're in now, regardless of whether you believe it. Hey, you gonna be affected by it, and ultimately, if you're not on the side of Yahweh Shimei Hey, they're gonna consume you. <clears throat> so, to get back to the book of Luke, um, twenty-one, you know, to continue to read what Yahweh Shai was speaking, and, uh, for Rome and of now, this is um Luke twenty-one. <clears throat> I believe I stopped at twenty-three. Yeah, I read twenty-three. I'll read it again. But one to them that are with child, and to them that give suck, in those days. For there should be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right. And I'll, I'll just stop there. <clears throat> but there's another precept, you know, because when we go into Matthew 24, it's also speaking of that time. Right. But it's also manifold. <clears throat> this is Matthew 24 and 4. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So we apply this to then and now, because it's applicable. It's manifold, man, you know. But as you see, at a time of evil a, that they, they went through back in the times of Rome, it was prevalent, man. So this is the Roman historian Tacitus. 
And he said he recorded the event. First, the fire swept violently over the level spaces because what happened was a neuro order, you know, um, uh, you know, really, he blamed the fire on Jake. Right now, when you do your history or your research on this history, uh, certain historians will try to tell you, oh, well, Nero didn't blame blame it on the Christians, which hey, they first called us Christians at Antioch. But it's speaking of Israelites. Right. But when you look at the reasons as to why and then what happened after the fire. Hey, he was persecuting us, man. Because he's seen that the 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 um it, it, it I don't want to say it became a movement, but you can see that uh more Jake started to believe. I'll say that, right? More Jake started to believe as of now. So what happened in order to quell, you know, or try to quell the um the the revival of Jake being uh, uh believing, what did he do? He slaughtered, he killed him. Right? It says first the fire swirled violently over the level spaces. Then it climbed the hills. Oh, another thing as well. They they also blame it and say that Nero at this time, you know, wanted um the the agriculture, not the agriculture, slacky, the architecture, you know, the architecture of the land and the spaces to change. You know, that's one of the the, the quote unquote reasons they say he did it. Hey, but then they go in and say that um you know after the 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 fire swept and destroyed everything, you know, and the bloodshed happened. A, that um he built it up exactly how he wanted, right? But it says first the fire swept violently over the level spaces, then it climbed the hills, but returned to ravage the lower ground again. Because a as you read historical um you know um accounts, it speaks about how you know you had uh basically individuals of Rome, you know who, when a fire uh, wasn't as large or didn't get as big as they wanted to, a it was certain men that was carrying around torches and would fuel the fire literally. By by throwing those torches into places that weren't burning, right? It says to ravage the lower ground again. It outstripped every countermeasure, right? Because individuals did try to put the fire out. It says terrified because hey, it affected Jake. It says terrified streaking women, helpless old and young, people intent on their own safety, people unselfishly supporting invalids or waiting for them, fugitives and lingerers alike all heightened the confusion. So how much more in the times that we're coming into, right? Hey, the great confusion is going to fall upon this place. Hey, the fact that so much liberty has been in America and people have been so careless and proud. Hey, when Yahweh Shemashah brings these plagues full on, hey, it is going to be way worse than a third world country. Another reason as to why is because there's so many weapons in this place. You know? So people are going to be killing, murdering. You got sleeper cells that's in the country. So this is going to be far worse than Rome. You know, it says, as the fire blazed out of control, some citizens tried every measure to put out the flames. It is told that the citizens were stopped. Also, some of the mob lit torches and threw them into the flames to feed the fire. Tacitus makes an interesting note about these arsonists who claim they acted under orders. And they could only act under the orders of who? The emperor, the king. Perhaps they had or they may just have wanted to plunder unhampered. No, it's not true. It says Nero heard the news from his palace at Antium and rushed to Rome just in time to see the Palatine Palace in flames. His newly built mansion was nothing but a, a pile of smoldering ash. Nero immediately organized a team of uh, firefighters and provided shelter for the panic stricken people who had been left homeless. The fire burned for nine days, leaving 10 out of his 14 regions in ruins with the loss of many. Hey, now, even in that, you know, saying that he helped. Hey, we understand a hey, Sirach 12 and Sirach 13 says, hey, what? Never trust thine enemy, right? For like his iron rusted, so did his wickedness. But when we go into the 13th chapter, it says what? If he uh, if he have need of thee, he will use thee. So that could have easily been him eh, to, to ultimately get more Jakes, get more Israelites eh, within his uh, confines to slaughter, to kill, man. It says Nero decided that he would place the blame on scapegoats because there was a danger rumors, a dangerous rumor that Nero himself had ordered the fire in order to vandalize the capital city. And to free up space for his new building plans. A which he ordered that man. Hey, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Every time Esau wants control, he does what? He causes chaos. This this is a hey, he's been doing this from the beginning. This is a, a cunning man we're talking about. We're talking about a man who who rape, robs, and, and pillages to get what he wants. John 10 and 10 tells us what the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That that piece of Esau has never left. You know? It's never left. He's always moved like that. So them trying to say that he didn't do it is a lie. And we're going to and it's going to show forth why it's a lie. It says his scapegoats were none other than the Christians, which were Jake Israelites, 
who were already being accused in one way or another within Roman pagan society. Jake was already getting persecuted for spreading the gospel. Right. It says this was officially the time that the active persecution of the Christian church began. At some point soon, it became a crime to bear the name Christian and the suppression of the church became state policy. This persecution would last off and on for almost three centuries. So there it is. Right. There it is. Right. Let's read this. It says the fire was in all likelihood used by Nero to further his own building projects. But the Christians who were blamed for it, which were Israelites, who were blamed for it were Jewish believers, Israelites that believed in Yahweh Shai. That's, you know, you got to pick out the bones. Uh, it's like you got to chew the meat, spit out the bones. A fact often unacknowledged in church history, right? Because they don't really go into history in the Christian church. You know, it's all about love. You know, it's not about prophecy or history. You know, they, they, they tend to leave out those huge, those two important aspects, you know, of the scriptures, which is really, you know, everything because Yahweh Shai, he always dealt with history. He always dealt with prophecy, right? It says, it's like, yeah. it says the beginning of Christian involvement or, you know, the belief in, I don't want to say just the belief, but uh, the, the awakening, awakening, you can say involvement in Roman history shows the phenomena of persecution, stereotyping, and victimization tactics that Christians themselves were later to apply to the... Ah, oh, here we go. There go the BS, man. There goes the BS. <laughs> there it goes. Hey, let's uh, let's get to more of it. Um, it says, Roman... It says, brief overview of the events surrounding the Great Fire of Rome, Jewish rebellion, and Christian identity to the Masada of 73 um, AD. It says, Roman authorities viewed the spread of Judaism as a threat to Rome. <clears throat> Jewish businessmen aroused the resentment of their non-Jewish competitors. And as you see that, um, I believe uh, it was a maker of idols. Was he making Diana of uh, Ephesus? I believe that's what he was making. Let's get into it. But he was an idol maker. Let's see. <clears throat> Your notes in the book of Acts. It's lucky. Yeah, here we go. Diana of Ephesus. So it is Acts 19 and 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain into the craftsmen. So a hey, this um uh excerpt here is speaking about you know Jewish businessmen aroused the resentment of their non-Jewish competitors. Hey, because uh, Demetrius lost money due to the fact that Jake stopped believing in Diana of Ephesus when the gospel was being preached, you know, to Israelites uh, in that region. Right. And that's why it says here. It says whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Right. We got our money from from making these idols. Moreover, you see in here that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people. Right from what being in a Gentile state of mind by being what a, a heathen following heathenistic customs and turning them back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai to Yahweh Shai. It says this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Right. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be said and not, but also that the temple of the great Di goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed. Whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is the Diana of the Ephesians. So there shows you right there that how that business was disrupted, as this part of the, the, the excerpt is speaking. It says, Jews were scorned for refusing to burn incense unto their emperor's statue. Worse than Americans. Okay, they're always throwing some something else in there. Let's just get to the history, man. It says, Jews, including the followers of Yahweh Shai, aroused suspicion by their inclination to keep to themselves. They appeared to others as haters of the world outside of their circle. Hey, well, the scriptures tell you. <clears throat> right. This is uh, coming from the book of Isaiah 59 and 15. It says, yea, truth faileth and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. So when you turn from wickedness, you know, the, the those that are in the dark. Are going to hate you 
right? And they appear to them as haters, but haters of the world is good. Hey, we are to hate the world, man. Though we have to live in it, and hey, you're to hate the way that this wickedness is set up in this uh, in this society, man. Hey, so that's, that's that was righteous. It says they were disliked for their quarrelsome the denunciations of gods other than the most high right so jay coming back to realize who they are and practicing you know um uh the the rehearsing the righteous acts so like you right and the first commandment is to what make no other gods uh, uh um worship yahweh bashim yahweh shai and make no other gods and serve no other gods man matter of fact let's just get to it say it verbatim this is coming from the book of um exodus the 20th chapter and I'm um, start here at the top. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy power, Yahweh, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And so there it is. So by Jake a um repenting, you know, the the rest of the Israelites hated it. Um it says they were disliked for their quarrelsome denunciations of gods other than Yahweh, and they were often targets of mockery and violence. Hence getting into, you know, the the point of this lesson, right? In those days what happened? Hey, they were subject unto violence. They were subject unto hate. So how much more in these last days, right? This is Matthew 5 and 10. And it reads, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, which we know that's what he is going to do. And we got Nero back, man. We got Trump in. Trump is in office. A hey, Nero is back in his position. You can't forget that he called us the prophets of doom. So understand that this man is going to a hey, further that the persecution of the prophets, man. He's still an Edomite, right? And we ain't had no hope in him anyways, but hey, we understand his role. And it's going to come to pass on how much he actually hates hey, the Lord's servants. Hey, as he did then, hey, he will now. I said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, right? We read that he that turneth from wickedness or evil maketh himself a prey. So how much more in a, in a wicked society like America? Right here it is. The, the conservatives are telling you. <clears throat> it's like, yeah, we're Bible believing Christians. Hey, but as Elder Yashawamba did his lesson on last week, hey, they're just culturally Christians, man. They don't actually, you know, um, have a disdain for this place. You know, they don't they don't actually, you know, um. Speak up of the, the violence and wickedness that goes on in America. No, they're comfortable with it. But as long as they're given the outside appearance of something holy and righteous, you don't guess what? That's enough for them. Hey, but they're far from it. And on top of that, hey, it, <clears throat> this book is only for Israelites. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And only the, the elect and the one-third is going to actually repent, man. The rest, hey, they're going to be destroyed with you. But it says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil false against you falsely for my sake. Right. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So as it was back then, as the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun in the book of Ecclesiastes. Is Ecclesiastes um, <clears throat> 1 and 14. And 14, and it reads, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Um, so like it, that's not it. What was I reading? I was, like, I was supposed to read nine. It says, the thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It has been already of old time, which was before us. <clears throat> so, matter of fact, I believe this is coming from the book of Matthew as well. I think not. Let's see. <clears throat> 
for it shall be given. It's like I'm looking for one precept. <clears throat> This is Matthew 10 and um, 16. It says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to their councils. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And this happened to the prophets of old. Hey, look at Stephen, man. Stephen went through this and got stoned, man. Look at the ways in which the apostles hey, were, were put to death, man. These were like brutal ways. Crucified upside down. Look at the way the Maccabee brothers were and their mother was killed, man. Filleted. You know, having having body parts cut off, man. So, hey, understand <clears throat> this is this is way. Hey, ultimately, this is what we signed up for. Hey, and this is just what we have to go through. Have it in your mind that you're going to be uh, persecuted and, and and killed, man. You know, that's a thought. That's why the scriptures tell you, hey, you got to eat this roll, man. In thy mouth it was sweet, but it says in thy belly it was bitter. Understanding that, hey, the, the same prophets in which we read, hey, those men are back upon the earth. Right? And Yahweh Shai said, it's like Yahweh said, uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We seen what Yahweh, or we didn't, you know, Salakia. So like, yeah. <clears throat> we read about what Yahweh Shai went through, man. In his persecution, in his death. Hey, the servants are not greater than their Lord, man, than their 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 king. So there's that's a though it <clears throat> may be something bitter, you know, to to think about. You should already have it in your mind, hey, that you gotta go through it, and be faithful through it, man. That's part of understanding and being a prophet, man. Understanding and taking the bitter <clears throat> and accepting it. Right? It says, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. So there it is, man. That's just uh, another part of the persecution in which we're going to have to endure as Jake dealt with it and all the previous captivities. The new Rome, we got to deal with it again. You know, and it was because what? Hey, they believed and they were preaching, you know, preaching what? The coming of Yahweh Shai, the, the heralding in. They believed in the gospel, the good news hey, and the bitter that came with it. <clears throat> right. And that was the, that was pretty much the point, you know, that we gotta we gotta endure this persecution, man. And it's gonna get tough. It's gonna get heavy. Hey, but you gotta gotta lay that upon your, uh the Lord, man. Lay it upon your Habashim Al Shai. You know, and understand. Hey, as Apostle Paul said, you know, I suffer these things for Yahweh Shai's sake. You know, he speaks about him being stoned, or it's like he he does he did get stoned, but he speaks about shipwreck. You know, he speaks about a hey, um being in the midst of thieves, being in the midst of heathen. You know, and, and being hurt, he speaks about getting, um, you know, receiving stripes. I believe he said 30 stripes plus one, something to that effect. You know, but he had to suffer that all hey, to, to, in order to get that prize, man, in order to get the crown. But we understand this is coming. You know, gear your minds. Understand, hey, this is part of the heaviness that we must endure. If Yahweh Shah did it, we got to go through it. You know, the Lord is test. He's going to test you. You know, and he knows how much hey, you can take. So that was pretty much the, the the point, you know, to go into the history, but to also get into, you know, the persecution. Because, hey, that's that's going to come, man. And it's going to come soon. Hey, so Lord willing, this lesson was edifying unto the body. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Harakakodash. A double honors unto the elders and apostles of GMS Great Millstone. And a sincere shalom to you. I can bring out this word in diligence and in truth. Shalom.